Brad Lawrence is going to come up here. Big round of applause for Brad. I am 22 years old, and I am working in this large bookstore in St. Louis. It's a really big place, two stories with a two-tiered stairwell that connects the top and bottom floors. And I am, I am, it's after hours, and I'm straightening the mystery section at the bottom of the stairwell on the first floor. And I have this song stuck in my head, and I'm kind of singing it unconsciously. And I'm singing, let me sleep on it, baby, baby, let me sleep on it. <laughs> Let me sleep on it and I'll give you an answer in the morning. When I hear this voice from the top of the stairs reply, I gotta know right now, will you love me? Will you love me forever? And this is how I become friends with Carrie. Because Carrie and I proceed to do the entire duet, working our way up the stairs towards one another until we meet in the middle for the big crescendo, you know, it was cold and lonely in the deep, dark night. And by this time, the rest of the staff has come out of the stacks, and they are gathered around, and they're, they're watching us, and they are thinking what they will think for the next three years whenever they look at Carrie and I, and that is, when are these two going to do it? Because from this moment on, Carrie and I are inseparable. Dinners, movies, concerts, we go everywhere together. I mean, to the point where going somewhere is just an excuse to go there together. And like one of, one of Carrie's favorite activities is to find something she knows I will hate, like the documentary series on 80s fashion designers, just because it makes her laugh when I fly into one of my rants. And I love to make Carrie laugh. So even when I enjoy the outing, like the uh, Damn Yankees revival starring Jerry Lewis, I will find something to rant about just to hear her giggle. Like everything we do, movies and books and new albums, gets passed to one another for each other's approval, or even better, disapproval, because then we can have a debate. And all of this leads to this kind of second language of, of knowing looks and in-jokes that make us impossible to be around. And the people who are around us, they watch us and they roll their eyes and they think, when are these two gonna do it? And my colleagues say to me, you have a crush on Carrie. And my friends say to me, you have a crush on Carrie. And my girlfriend, Lee, <laughs> says to me, you have a crush on Carrie. And I always say, I don't have a crush on Carrie. We're just friends. And I always think to myself, I don't have a crush on Carrie. I'm in love with Carrie. <laughs> but we don't do anything about it. We never do for three years because it, I have a girlfriend and you know she's very skish about these kind of things. Carrie's very guarded about relationships and the friendship is so important and it's so dear. Our fear is so great that on separate occasions each of us stage arguments just so we can run away and let the tension out and get away from one another for a little bit. But eventually, after a time, Lee and I, our relationship hits the skids like it was always going to do. And this dovetails nicely with the fact that Lee's work is transferring her to Michigan. And so about three days before Lee is set to leave, Carrie and I go out for a long walk in a park after dark, and we're having this long talk and this heart-to-heart, -heart, and we work our way back around towards our cars in the parking lot, and I'm talking about my failing relationship with Lee, and I look at Carrie, and I say, you know, it's just, when you know, when you know that there is something else, someone else, out there for you. Do you know what I mean? And Carrie looks at me dead in the eye and she says, yes I do. And this is the moment, this is the grand moment that this three years has been building up to. This is what we've been waiting for. This is our big chance. I have to seize this moment and we can be together and that's all that has to happen right here. This big thing that's come into this silence between us. All I've got to do is reach out and grab it and I screw it up. <laughs> I look at her and I go, I can't do this right now. I can't hurt Lee this way. I've got to do this right by Lee. I, I, you know, I can't betray her this way, and it's idiotic because Lee's going to be hurt no matter what I do or how I do it, and this is a mistake. I know it's a mistake. 
I can see that like this chance is going to go away and I will never get it back and it's going to be gone and I'll never be able to get this back. And as Carrie lowers her eyes and says, okay, I know that Carrie is gone too. I will never get Carrie back. And I am right because I see Carrie one more time and then I never see her again. And this haunts me for years, this mistake, this, every time I go through a breakup or I'm alone and desolate and depressed, I think to myself, this is, I missed that one golden chance to have happiness, to be with my soulmate, to really have true love and I will never have it and that's why I'm alone because I lost her and she's gone. And then I met a woman and fell in love and got married. And I didn't really think about Carrie that much anymore. <laughs> that need kind of faded away. And I didn't really have to think about it that much anymore. And then Facebook does the thing that Facebook does. <laughs> and suddenly I have to think about Carrie again. And this time when I think about Carrie, I realize that how I think about Carrie has changed. Because the woman I married, my wife, Cindy, she lets me make mistakes. I have screwed up with her any number of times, and it's, there is never a chance, some big opportunity, some big break or whatever that comes and goes, and I can never, ever get back with Cindy. When I screw up, Cindy sits back, waits for me to try again, and get it right. And that, I realize, thinking about Carrie again after so many years, I realize that, is the essence of love. That's real love. Being allowed to make mistakes. Anything else is just a crush. <laughs>